Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Kapodash, that were honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. The, the law written up in the scriptures, okay, has been around from the beginning of time. In the book of Genesis, it was known orally, all right, and you know, as time went on, the Most High saw fit saw fit to, you know, write it down upon stones. And nevertheless, it was always around. So I have a few precepts that I want to get into, going into, or just proving that fact. All right, so this is the book of Genesis chapter 4. And I'll start at the top. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law. Block it. I don't know why this, this app is messing up on me. Genesis 4 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, meaning he had sex with her, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yahweh. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The point I want to get into is verse 3 where it says in the process of time. Okay. The word process meaning the end, the end of space. Okay. It was required after a certain period of time for us to give, um, give a portion of our work unto the Lord. And we could find that in the book of Exodus. Chapter 22, in verse 29. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors. The firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thy oxen and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be with this dam, and on the eighth day thou shalt give it to me. So that is the process of time. Okay. So now, and also proving that I was talking about, you know, the law we just read in Exodus 22. When you go back to, uh, was that, yeah, back at Genesis 4. It speaks about the first things of the flocks. And we just read about what? The first things of the liquor or of the oxen, which is the flock. Okay. So this is the book of Genesis. Chapter 48. And 18. You know, and as I'm reading, I think about. How this is going to be in a kingdom. You know, we have to spell things out all the time. Of course, to the other nations. But into Israel, they already knew what it was. You know? That's how it was back then. Showing you how people had more respect. They had more morals. They had morals unto the Heavenly Father. You know, but as time went on, people got more wicked. And the most I had to reiterate that which, you know, was known to their forefathers. Okay, so this is uh, Genesis chapter 48 in verse, uh, the point is in 18, but I'll start at 15. So Joseph, 
you know, which is also part of our heritage, would go back, you know, he, he heard that his dad was sick, so, you know, he went back to him, um, you know, to, to uh, hear his last words, basically. And he blessed Joseph. Slack, let me start up a little. Genesis chapter 48, verse 10. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God has shewed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim and his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hand wittingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, uh, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. And the angel which redeemed me from all evil, blessed the lads and let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. It displeased him. And he held his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Talking about Ephraim. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know my son, I know, I know it. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day saying, and thee shall Israel bless saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he said Ephraim before Manasseh. Okay, now as you see, um, again, proven going into the law because the firstborn, just as the first fruit, was, um, you know, a heavy blessing unto the Lord. That's why it displeased uh, Joseph that Jacob thought that um, Manasseh that Jacob put his right hand upon Ephraim instead of Manasseh. Okay. And it, which goes into the um the precept in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 21, right? And 17. I start at 15, read down to the point. Um, Deuteronomy 21, 21 and 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength and the firstborn of. Slaki. For he is the beginning of his strength, the right of the firstborn, and his is his. You know? So that's what it is. Okay, the firstborn is always the 
the firstborn is always the um the more is is, is naturally you know the one who who receives the greatest the greater blessings you know now we know certain precepts you know certain things in the scriptures might have not went verbatim like for example with Jacob and Esau you know or Isaac and um and um Isaac and um Ishmael all right and that had to happen for uh, prophecy's sake nevertheless according to the law in which was you know was again as i mentioned was um orally known according to the law which is um or, yeah orally known in genesis this is how things were okay and as i read it's also think of how you know judgment you know you don't judge according to the flesh all right, but according to the spirit, if this is your firstborn son, no matter if it was, you know, from the um the wife who was hated, it doesn't matter. You know, the most high's word still stands. All right, so now let's go into Genesis 38 and 8. All right, so now this is going to another patriarch, Judah. Which is a so-called um, African Americans today, in which Judah and Joseph were brethren. Joseph going into the so-called Puerto Ricans, and Manasseh going into Joseph, which is synonymous with Ephraim, going into the so-called Puerto Ricans and Manasseh. All right, going into the so-called Cubans. All right, so this is the book of uh, Genesis thirty-eight. I start at the top, and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned in to a certain Adulamite whose name was Hara. And Judah saw that there were a there, and Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. He had sex with her, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. Ayar, oh, it would be uh, Ayra. Meaning go wait, and she conceived again, and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. Meaning strong. Okay, I will, I will none. And she yet again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Shalah. And he was at she Shazib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Alright. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and Yahweh slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her. And raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife. That he spilled it on the ground. Lest that he should give seed to his brother. Going into the law. In the book of Deuteronomy 25. And 5. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead should not marry with, without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him to wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. Okay, which was, well, and it says, and it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth, shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. So literally, he will bring back his brother's seed. All right? And Onan knew that he couldn't really claim that child. That was his brother's child. So, you know, that's why he pulled out and spilled seed on the ground. You know? But just a few precepts going into improving that the law was oral. And the law was oral and that it was always around. You know, 
And um, yeah, man, people just they they don't want to they don't want to accept it because that means that they you know they will have to take account for their own wickedness, and people don't like that. You know, they have the mindset of do as thou wilt. Nevertheless, the law was always around, and it will always be around. As a matter of fact, when we go into the book of Gen uh, Jeremiah thirty one. All right, it speaks about how the law will re the most high will renew the laws within us. You know, he he will put not renew the laws, but um renew us. All right, as far as being geared towards righteousness, whereas today we are geared towards wickedness. Behold, the days come, this is Jeremiah 31 and 31, saith Yahweh. That I will make a new covenant. All right. The word new going in Kadash, meaning fresh. He's going to refresh it with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by their hands to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was in husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. You know, so it's almost, it's almost like going back in time, you know, to where the laws were written in our inward parts as we as we just read, you know, in different um examples. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And that's the beauty of salvation. All right, even when you go into um Esau, he'll tell you that which is true, salvation is to be delivered from death. All right, which death um came by way of sin. So we're going to be delivered from sin, which is which is the transgression of the law. All right. With these flesh, this flesh that we are in is geared to transgress the laws. You know, so Lord, one you, I can edify Shalom to the elect.